What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Willie X Podcast. This is John Arriva. I'm here with my boy, Steve Vasquez. And uh, we're going to chat today about uh, content, production, and our conversation that we're beginning about potentially putting out a sizzle reel, putting out a little bit of a show about telling the story of everything that we're doing. And so Steve's super connected in uh, the production world, uh, production veteran for sure. And I seek his counsel. Steve, thanks for coming, dude. Dude, my pleasure. All right. So I think that at the end of this conversation, I just like to be a little bit further along and maybe getting a little bit of advice from you about doing a production, doing a show potentially. Um, what advice do you think you have for me on that one? Oh, man. It's difficult, you know, because yeah. advice wise, you are very seasoned in production as well. I don't know. Sure how the viewers know, but a little bit. Yeah. Mr. Revo has his hat in a lot of production world. Yes. Thus this podcast. So he understands that the imagination is limitless, you know? So it's one of those things. I think the most important key and what we're doing now is pre-production organizing and figuring out the full on game plan. So we work smarter and not harder. Yeah. I like that idea. And I'm sure that you have a system in place, right? For when you get a, client and they're like, I want to do this, then you apply your system to the beginning parts of like the information gathering that we're doing right now, basically. And so, um, I got systems. I'm sure you got systems. Uh, what's the, what's the first step in the process when it comes to like the planning part of the production? Obviously meeting with the, the client and figuring out what they want and then figure out, cause everyone has some kind of a vision board, what they want maybe at Pinterest yeah. or like, oh, I've seen this show and I would love yeah. to have as an example and have that as your quote unquote outline mm -hmm. and then go off from there. And then we can say, hey, look, this is where we're at yep. and what we can do. And this is what's going to cost. And they, you know, that's when we start talking money. So we just kind of trim off the fat sure. to see if they're legit. If they're willing to talk money right off the bat, yeah, yeah. you're not wasting time. Yeah, true. It's Because to me, the most valuable thing you have is time. Exactly. Money comes and goes. Yes. Time is the most valuable thing because as we both are family men, yes. we want our time with our family. For sure. For so sure. once you realize they're willing to talk money right off the bat and they're not comfortable yeah, with absolutely. it, that's the key because then they can tell you realistically, oh, this is where I'm at realistically. Yep. So it's not hurting my feelings nor theirs. Yeah. And then we can say, okay, with this as your goal and this is your budget, we can meet here in the middle where everyone's happy. And that's kind of my quote unquote template, my starting. Okay. And I asked for that information too in the beginning. And so that's part of like our, our negotiation process between the two of us was, you know, I, I was trying to get there as quickly as possible too, the money part, of right? course, which is the most important part. Cause you got, you probably got other clients that are like, yo, I am thinking about doing this and they're super serious. They already got the money. You know, they do. Yeah. Like a perfect example today. I just did a shoot for yeah. us animal sanctuary up North. Sure. Literally just came from that to this. And when we spoke, we were already talking and you just cut to the chase. Yes. Because you're in the same thought pat pattern or process as I am. Yeah. Family time. Yes. And you were like, Hey, Oh yeah. Give me a number, an ideal number, and then we will meet in the middle. And it was just exact same formula that I had. For sure. You know, just yep. different wording, different words, but it was the same thing. Hey, yeah. this is what it is. And then we'll talk oh, yeah, realistically. Sure. And I called my wife before this and I was like, hey, just letting you know, I'm going to be doing a, a meeting with Steve from uh, one of my old gigs in the past, you know, Steve in production. And she's like, okay, fine, you know. But and yeah. the reason why time is so important exactly. because, you know, same thing. I did the same thing with my wife nice. I was, is that means they're more, they have to do more dinner for the kids sure. and is without our help. Yeah. You know, and I know yeah, you were sure. the same. I'm, I'm a big believer of 50, 50. Sure. I have kids I'm cooking or while the wife is doing home homework and I'm doing or laundry. Like it's, yeah. it's a partnership. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's probably why you and I will work well together is because we're both on the same in the same ballpark uh, in our personal lives as well. So we, we want that balance. And at the same time, I think what yeah. helps me with working together is you also understand my industry, totally. even though you, you've jumped shipped and went under, but yeah. you also understand yeah. 
the the pain, the process, and all that stuff, so you understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, and so now I'm I'm thinking I want to kind of get back into it. I don't ever want to lose that skill set that I uh, actually was de pretty decent at. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and also I know that it has a really nice profitability. Agreed. If you do it correctly. Agreed. So what I understand now, ultimately more than ever, after getting and leaving production, is that the way that you make the most money in production is by doing your own production. Yes, because you have no overhead. That's right. Especially if you own the gear. I'm saying also doing a show, doing content no. yourself. Agreed. Yep. If you have the manpower. Correct. Perfect example. If I wanted to do a show, yes. it would cost me pennies on the dollar. Right. Because I own my gear, I own this, so I don't have to charge a client wear and tear. I don't have to charge rental. All I have to really charge a lot of the times is manpower. Yeah, of course. And that's cost. So therefore, there's no overhead if I wanted to pr produce content. Exactly. Same thing with you. You were smart enough. Yeah, we're doing it. Wanted a podcast. Yes. You purchased the equipment for a podcast. Legit microphones, camera, the exactly. whole nine. So your overhead is low, low now yeah. in the very beginning it was yeah. it wasn't but now it's super low and it's the best marketing so it's the best so the work that you do is by far right now in 2024 is the best mar version of marketing for sure yes because if you make something that goes viral that money that you spent whatever it was and let's just call it maybe five grand ten grand whatever it is for for a, a full podcast setup yeah. well i'm saying easy to maybe make a really nice commercial Yes. To make something that is professionally done and can be uh, applied and, you know, advertised, right? So that's what I'm talking about is you could spend five grand and you can make a million bucks. And that's, I think that's the most challenging part that I have with clientele yep. is the, that a first initial number shock. Yes. And, but they don't understand the return on it. Yes. Yes. It's, it is a big chunk. And yes, it, it's, but think about it, it's an investment. You know what I mean? And with that investment, you're gonna get return on your profit. And that's, and if you're smart about it, we'll make it evergreen. Yes, So evergreen. It's, it's not gonna be just exactly. a seasonal thing. So, exactly. And that's why even sometimes if a client, I'll tell them like, hey man, I understand you're trying to promote this sale, Yeah. but the sales is only a, a seasonal thing. Yes, exactly. Let's do something smarter where it's a sale. Yeah, like come on, you're not gonna blow your whole right. like your whole budget yeah, yeah, exactly. on Christmas for yeah. one sale unless that that sale's gonna make up your whole year. And if you do it every single year, the same sale, the exact same thing, then you don't need to change it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then we think about graphic wise, right. so it can stay evergreen. Exactly. So we kind of can pivot. I'm a big believer because a lot of my market is small business. Yeah. And I'm a small business owner myself, as are yourself. Exactly. We are the most crucial i think in our industry because we need to grow our businesses so we need to promote ourselves the most yes. but it's also harder for us because every penny counts for sure so it's very like oh do i need to do this do i need this so we're sure. always trying to i will tell you the thing that i'm starting to see that's most effective are these little skits that mm -hmm. are being done around and in your business but it's just a funny little skit, okay? That draws attention, something that you could definitely shoot. I've, I've really been trying to study the, the marketing and advertising tactics of companies with products that are trying to make them go viral. And that's, that's kind of the hard thing too, because some people think there's a recipe for right. viral. There right. is none. Of course. I've shot things that clients thought was gonna be viral and it was the biggest flop. I've shot things that wasn't supposed to be viral, became viral. Okay. I've shot things that was supposed to be viral, wasn't viral, and then a year or two later, it picked up momentum. Okay. So there's no real mathematical equation yeah. for that. Well, one of, one of the things that we know though, that if you do it high quality, if you have the quality, yes. and you put in the pre-production, and the planning, and the casting, and all those things, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you do those things, you at least know that you're making the caliber that they would justify to go. Exactly. Right? Exactly. What I also, depending on certain... Which is money. Uh, yes. An investment. Yeah, an investment. 
Yes. And, that, and that's the thing I'm trying to do. I try my best is to educate. Okay. I'm a big believer of education. I may not speak the most eloquent. I may not, I'm rough around my edges, but I'm very sincere and I know my craft. And I try to educate people who right. are looking for my services yep. who may not know what it takes to do certain productions. Yep. And I help guide them. Because I think once I educate them and so on, it makes exactly. the rest of the process easier. And I'm not trying to make a one-off video for somebody. Right. I'm looking for clients. So yes. what I, I know what I do differently. I provide customer service. Nice. I like. Me too. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, for me, you better be happy with the product. Because all I have is my name. For sure. So if you are not happy, then I don't want you to talk bad about my company or my name. Right. And that to me, I do everything organic, word of mouth. I don't advertise. I don't buy Google ads. I don't do anything. Okay. Everything's 100% word of mouth. Because nice. my thing is if I do something for you, yep. you love it. If you tell a friend... John, Jane, Harry, right. John, Jane, and Harry are going to go through me automatically just because they came through you. Like, oh, I, I'm not going to even look for other production companies. Yeah. John referred him. I would say that's definitely how we've grown our business as well. And that's the best. That's the best one, for sure. Because you, even though it's the slowest way. Yes, it's the slowest. But yes. that, like you're building a house. That foundation yep. is rock solid. Right. And then if you provide really good customer service, then you're just going to do a great job, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that's awesome. So before we uh, end, I wanted to bring up, we found the Steve prank video. <laughs> and we're going to post it. Okay. So I actually found it not too long ago and I was going to message everybody. But yeah, I, <laughs> I think I found it too. And just in case, please send it to me. Fast. So we, Steve and I, uh, would, we did a really nice office style prank. <laughs> okay. And so we did want to eventually maybe start working together as like office pranksters Yeah, and shooting it, you know, because I think that content is fantastic Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think it wins. So, you know, maybe I think that we're going to post it because it's a really great video and it's really funny and we're in it and we prank, uh, our chef, Steve, and it's fantastic. So it's a great, like, it's also a great icebreaker for me. Like um, we're about to do a, a company meeting. Going to show the Steve Prank video. You know, <laughs> fantastic. So, um, I pr I had the most fun in production doing that. No joke. Agreed. Uh, like for me, I did, and that's the way I run a lot of my sets. Yeah. Corporate. I don't care if it's corporate, mom and pop, whatever. You have to have fun. Yeah. Because sometimes when we're things we're shooting or doing is stressful. Yeah. True. You know, and true. To me. Stress is a killer. Stress is cancer inducing. Yes. And stress just makes the product horrible. Yeah. So if you're not having fun, like we're getting, we're having, literally having fun, yeah. cameras, yeah. microphones, normal yeah. conversation. Exactly. If we ignore the noise on the outside, yeah. there's no stress to be had. Exactly. And production actually in that moment is very fun. You know? Yeah. It's just like, cause it's just a, a couple guys hanging out. Uh, we all know what we're doing. And so it's just like we're, we're going. And so that's what's in that production that we made, the prank on Steve, is it's a great production. It's a great production, yeah. a multi-cam yeah. prank. Yeah, prank. It's Everybody bad. was in on it. Yeah. And, and the best part, if I remember right, we even hit microphones so we can get yep. his audio. So we did. Again, it's also sharpening our trait. Yes. Because we did things different than we were normally doing producing a live show. For sure. So what, what I think I want to do is I, I would like to try to post that before this video so that they're going to be able to go back to the video before this and, and click it and watch it. Sound good? Or you even use it as an intro right before. Yeah, it's true. But I think that will just separate them in just, just two different videos. So the, the video is already posted, guys. It's already uh, it's <laughs> up. So watch it. Um, so there you go, dude. Thanks for doing this, man. Dude, no, my pleasure. Seriously. Steve enjoys being behind the camera, not in front of the camera. So we really appreciate him doing the podcast and talking a little bit about business entrepreneurship, uh, family, which is like, you know, I'm having a great time right now, dude, with all this stuff. Dude. It, it, yeah. And there's times, you know, I get stressful and yes. I get annoyed and everything like that, but I have to say, you know what? Of course I wasn't in my old position where I met you, yeah, yeah. which was hell or I, I get paid to play with cameras today. I was in a cage with okay. a Fox. I was in a cage with a deer, a, a turkey, Seriously. pelicans, 
Um, dude, all kinds of stuff. A this bear. Where? I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> it was like a zoo or something? Like a sanctuary, oh, animal sanctuary. sanctuary. Yeah. And it was amazing. Amazing. See, that's pretty badass. And I got paid to do that. Nice. All right, man. Well, uh, maybe we will be doing some production in the future. I would love it. I think that we should because it's like we got the team back together um, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. You know? So uh, thanks a lot, Steve. Guys, this is Willie X Podcast. John Arrivo here with Willie Cafe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.